very warm welcome to Thoro Newspaper Analysis for 12th of April, which is brought to you by Lord Seco. Now, as far as the agenda for today is concerned, at the very outset, we're going to have a look at some of the important national and international news updates. This is going to be followed by two legal news updates for today. And at the very end, we have an Indian Express editorial to discuss the title of which is Why Tamil Nadu's Online Gambling Bill It Would Clash with the Center's Rules. So essentially, the governor of the state of Tamil Nadu, he gave his assent to this particular bill which seeks to ban online gambling as well as games where there is a monetary value involved and the person winning the game is by mere chance. There is very little scope of skill, if at all present. And we've also seen that the central government, by virtue of the amendments which were proposed by it in the IT rules of 2021, it seeks to regulate the online gaming industry. So there is an apparent conflict between these two legal instruments and we're going to have a look at uh, what is going to be the way forward in order to harmonize this conflict. With this, let's start with the TN for today. The first update is with respect to the launch of the State Energy Efficiency Index for the year 2021-2022. So the Union Power Minister R.K. Singh has launched this particular index report by virtue of which it has been indicated that the states of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Kerala, Rajasthan and Telangana, they are top performing states with a score of over 60 points on various parameters which are used to evaluate state level energy efficiency initiatives. Now the next update is with respect to world's, uh, the inauguration of world's first Asian King Vulture Conservation and Breeding Center. The first world's, uh, the world's first conservation and breeding center for critically endangered Asian king vulture. It is set to open in the state of UP, in the state of Maharaj Ganj. The center, which is named as Jatayu Conservation and Breeding Center, it is designed to maintain a sustainable population of species by breeding king vultures in captivity and later on releasing them into the wild. Now, this is an update uh, which is uh, critical for the Lok Sabha election for the next year because uh, in a boost for the Ahmadmi party ahead of the Lok Sabha elections, it has gotten the tag or recognition of being a national party by the Election Commission of India on Monday. And there are three other parties which have lost this particular tag, which is uh, your Trinamur Congress, which is TMC, Nationalist Congress Party, which is NCP, and CPI, which is your Communist Party of India. They've lost their tags. And uh, as far as uh, the criteria for getting this particular tag is concerned, according to Election Commission rules, a party gets national status if it is recognized as a state party in four states. Now the next update is with respect to the launch of Vibrant Village Program by the Home Minister of India at Kibitu, which is a border village in the state of Arunachal Pradesh. So on 7th of April, India's Home Minister Shri Amit Shah, he launched the Vibrant Village Program at Kibitu, which is a border village in the state of Arunachal Pradesh. This program, it aims to bring about the overall development of rural areas and to transform them into self-sufficient and prosperous communities. Kibitu, it is a remote village which is located in the Indo, uh, near the Indo-China border. And it is the easternmost village of India and it is considered as the gateway to the state of Arunachal Pradesh. Now, before we proceed, I have a question. The state of Arunachal Pradesh is called what? Like, uh, there are certain states which are named by the features that they have, any geographical feature or any other feature. So what is the title which is given to the state of Arunachal Pradesh? Kindly put down your answers in the comment section. Now the next update is with respect to the launch of Tulsi Ghat restoration project in Uganda by uh, Shri Jai Shankar. See, during uh, his uh, three-day visit to Uganda's uh, capital city, Kampala, External Affairs Minister S. Jai Shankar he has launched the Tulsi Ghat restoration project in Varanasi. He commended the efforts being put forth by the overseas friends of BJP Uganda to enhance the aesthetic appeal of the oldest inhabited city in the world, which is Varanasi. Moving on to the next update. So this is with respect to the release of first edition of Dogri version of the Indian constitution by India. So see, on 10th of April, India has released the first edition of Dogri version of the Indian constitution. The release of this version, it is a significant step towards promoting linguistic diversity and preserving the cultural heritage of our country. 
Dogri is a language which is spoken in the northern Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir and it is one of the 22 official languages which is recognized by the Indian constitution. On 22nd of December 2003, in a major milestone for the official status of the language, Dogri was recognized as a national language of India in the Indian constitution. And with this, we've come to the international segment for today. The first update is with respect to US and Indian Air Force engaging in Pope India fighter training exercise. So uh, the India's Sukhoi 30s, which are made in Russia, they will participate in an exercise named Coop India that uh, it uh, involves dog fighting with American F-15 Strike Eagle fighter jets. This particular exercise was last conducted in the year 2019 and uh, due to the uh, the entire COVID uh, pandemic, it was, can it was postponed and therefore it has now been conducted after a gap of four years. Philippines and US, they've kick-started uh, their largest ever joint military drills. The Philippines and the United States, they've launched their largest ever joint military exercises on Tuesday as the long-standing allies seek to counter the growing uh, Chinese assertiveness in the region. Nearly 18,000 troops, they are taking part in the annual exercise called, in, in the annual exercise called the uh, Bali Carton or the shoulder to shoulder in Filipino, which are the first time where uh, where uh, there is going to be a live fire drill in the South China Sea, which Beijing claims as almost entirely having the sovereignty over. And with this, we've come to the legal update segment for today. The first update is coming from the Honorable Apex Court. So the Supreme Court has opined that at the stage of discharge, or while exercising the powers under Section 482 of the CRPC, the court is a very limited jurisdiction and it is required to consider whether any sufficient material is available to proceed further against the accused for which the accused is required to be tried or not. The name of this particular case is Central Bureau of Investigation versus RNC. The second update is also coming from the Honorable Top Court. So the Supreme Court has held that if the application is filed by invoking provisos, that application under Section 34, it must be filed within 90 days limitation to claim exclusion of period when the court remain closed. The top court added that if such an application, it is filed by invoking proviso to Section 34, subsection 3 of the Arbitration Act, which extends the period or the limitation period to further 30 days on the court's discretion, then benefit of such exclusion, it would not be available to the applicant. And with this, we have come to the last segment of our TNA, which is the Editorial Discussion Center. So see, the title of this particular editorial is Why Tamil Nadu's Online Gambling Bill It Would Clash With The Center's Rules. So, as we have discussed earlier, the point of discussion of this particular editorial is the approval of the governor for a bill banning online gambling in the state of Tamil Nadu. Now, this is going to be the structure of this particular article and we will structure follow the while we understand it in depth. So, first we will see what this particular bill ki, uh, sort of uh, events, important events, kya rahe, how it came about being passed. And then uh, we're going to have a look at uh, some of the important uh, provisions that it provides for. And we will essentially see what the games of chance kya hote hai, uske definition kya di hai is bill. Mein. And then we're going to have a look at uh, an authority which the bill seeks to establish in order to identify some game, such games of chances. And the authority ka kaam ye hoga ki pehle to wo identify kare ki kaun se kaun se games jo, games of chances hai. And then get it added to the schedule of the bill and which if notified becomes an act. And then uh, this, once it is added in the schedule, which provides for prohibited games, then it is going to be prohibited. And then we're going to have a discussion of uh, Online gaming center versus the state, the state of Tamil Nadu in this case. And then we're going to have an understanding of what are the norms of the central government by the central government, which recently notified the amendment in the IT rules of 2021. And at the very end, we're going to have a look at uh, the stand of the gaming companies. 
so let's start with the article for today so see the tamil nadu government it uh, res- on monday received the governor's approval for a bill banning online g- gambling and this development it has come days after the center notified fresh rules for online gaming now the state's assembly it had passed the tamil nadu prohibition on online ga- gambling and regulation of online games ordinance of 2022 in the month of october last year in early march the governor of the state had returned this particular ordinance for reconsideration but fir se jo state assembly hai unhone isi bill ko further pass uh, further refer kar diya governor ko for his approval and thereafter the governor had to give his assent and the governor did give his assent uh, did uh, give the assent now see the state uh, this particular uh, entire uh, topic of uh, states passing laws on online gaming which might be in conflict with the center's rule it is likely to emerge as a pain point many in the industry says or they believe so and they've raised their concern with the concerned ministry which is the ministry of electronics and it and this ministry is uh, the nodal agency for regulating this entire sector and uh, this particular law which is uh, being brought about by the state it is likely to be challenged in courts once it is notified now let's understand ki is bill ke major provisions kya hai to pehle to let's have an understanding of what is a game of chance so see this particular bill it prohibits online gambling a secondly it prohibits online games of chance played for money or other stakes so do cheeze do sort of categories of game jo hai it seeks to prohibit pehla to online gambling and dusra is online games of uh, chance jo ki which are played for money or other stakes now while it specifically names two games as games of chances it go much wider in scope because it defines online games of chance in the following manner so online games of chance kaun se kaun se hai those where both an element of chance and skill are involved and the element of chance dominates over the element of skill so dono elements hain there is an element of skill and there is an element of chance but the element of of uh, chance it dominates the element of skill secondly games presented as games of chance thirdly where the element of chance can only be eliminated by superlative skill and fourthly games that involve cards dice or wheel which work on random event generators and second ab hum iske portion pe aate hain bill ke which provides for an authority jo ki jiska kaam hoga to identify such sort of games so it establishes the tamil nadu online gaming authority and it it empowers this particular authority to regulate online gaming companies companies that are based outside the state they are required to follow specified due diligence ya fir they are required to restrict access of the people of tamil nadu the state's gaming authority it is going to identify games of chance and recommend them to be put or included in the schedule of prohibited games the governor he gave his assent hours after the legislative assembly passed a resolution against him for indefinitely sitting over several bills is pure mudde par humne apne मार्च के शुरुआती दिनों के टीएनए पे भी काफी विस्तार से चर्चा करी थी यू मे गो एंड रेफर टू दी कंसर्न टीएनए फॉर दैट नाउ लेट्स कम टू द पोर्ट द सेगमेंट वेयर वी हैव एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट बिटवीन दीस टू लेजिस्लेशंस सो सी ऑन लास्ट वीक द सेंटर हैड नोटिफाइड अमेंडमेंट्स टू द आईडी रूल्स ऑफ 2021 व्हिच ब्रॉट इन नॉर्म्स फॉर रेगुलेटिंग ऑनलाइन रियल मनी गेम्स and uh, when the uh, when uh, the, the minister for uh, state the minister of state for electronics and it uh, ravi shank uh, chandra shekhar he was asked about uh, the apparent conflict or the conflict then giving his uh, nod to tamil about this entire development then he said and i quote state governments regulating online ga- gambling it is not required any more as the it rules have been notified the ministry believes that uh, while gambling it is a state subject activities that occur on the internet including online gambling and gaming they fall exclusively within the domain of the ministry and the center now let's understand center ke kya norms hai by virtue of the amendments which were brought about in the it rules of 2021 so the fresh rules they require the setting up of multiple self regulatory bodies whose approval will be required for online games with an element of money games that involve wagering on outcomes of event they will not be allowed at all and online gaming companies they will also have to complete a kyc procedure for users when they first make a deposit in their account to play a game 
KYC norms laid down by the Reserve Bank of India for its regulated entities will have to be followed. Now let's understand that the companies in this sector operate in this sector, what is their stand? Because they are an important stakeholder in this entire debate and their stand, having an understanding of their stand, it is an important facet for our understanding of this entire issue. So see the industry association representing online gaming companies, they of course oppose this particular bill and as far as the head of All India Gaming Federation is concerned, he said, that the bill was unconstitutional and that the association would file a case against it. He said, and I quote, we will uh, challenge the constitutionality of the law once the effective date is notified and have fully, uh, and we have full faith that our judicial system will uphold the fundamental rights of the gaming platforms and their users, unquote. Similarly, the e-gaming federation said that uh, it was examining the legislation and it shall take appropriate action based on the legal advice in due course of time. Last November also, the All India Gaming Federation, it uh, challenged the constitutional validity of this particular bill in the High Court of Madras. However, us time pe, kyunki ye jo bill tha, wo law nahi bana tha, and it was not passed by the State Assembly. So uh, the, the, the High Court concerned, it gave liberty, the petition, it was withdrawn and uh, the High Court gave liberty to the uh, petitioners to approach the court as and when the bill is notified. Now last year also the High Court of Karnataka it had declared as unconstitutional certain provisions of the Karnataka Police Amendment Act of 2021 which prohibited and criminalized the activities of offering and playing online games by risking money or otherwise. So with this we've come to the end of today's TNM. Now, in case you want to get access to the free study material that Law Seco provides and uh, the TNA slides which are used in this particular video, please feel free to join our Telegram channel using the link in the description or you can scan the barcode here. These are the point of contacts in case you want to get in touch with Law Seco. Also, the answer to yesterday's question, the correct the question uh, that we posed in yesterday's TNA, it was uh, which article of the Indian Constitution gives the President the power to be the supreme command of the defense forces of the union and the correct answer to the question would be article 53 and the student who has given the correct answer is uh, Jeffrey and Johnny. Congratulations to you and all the very best. Uh, keep it up. Also, the link for today's uh, t the quiz based out of yesterday's training is provided in the description itself. Kindly go ahead and attempt the same and put down the answer to today's question in the comment section. Thank you for being with us.